Hello everyone, welcome to Saturn and welcome to What The Math. This is Anton and today we're going to explore Saturn and specifically talk about five unusual facts about Saturn's moons that you may have not known about before. We're going to take a look at those five different moons and talk about what is so unusual about this unusual planet and of course its unusual satellites. Welcome, enjoy the video. <laughs> Now this right here is the first satellite on our list, actually there's two of them we're going to take a look at and this one is called Janus and its companion is called Epimetheus. Now you don't really see Epimetheus but it is in the same orbit, as a matter of fact it is the only other moon in the solar system that actually occupies exactly the same orbit as its partner. Let me show you what I mean. Now this right here is Janus and on the other side currently you have Epimetheus. Now these two satellites surprisingly occupy exactly the same orbit. As a matter of fact they actually do come relatively close to one another at some point but they never collide and they never will. And the reason why they'll never collide is very interesting. Over the millions and billions of years of orbiting around Saturn, they've created a kind of pattern also known as a horseshoe orbit, where they kind of approach each other, but then they separate again. I think the best way to explain this is to actually show it to you in Universe Sandbox 2. And I guess uh, if you accelerate time here, you'll get to see that, well, first of all, they do have almost exactly the same orbit. It's only different by about 50 kilometers. Uh, and over time, they kind of approach each other relatively close and then they separate again and then they approach each other again and they separate again. Now that's actually very interesting and it, uh, we haven't really seen any other objects in our solar system that do that. But here, um, what's interesting is that when Janus was first discovered, we couldn't really figure out what's going on because its mass constantly kept changing it until we realized that uh, Janus and... Uh, that uh, we actually were looking at two different rocks in the same orbit. So Janus and um, Epithemius were two different objects and their mass is different. And when the astronomers were looking at them, they were basically looking at two different things. And once they realized that, and this actually happened when Viking 2 uh, mission came to Saturn and flew past Saturn and took some pictures. When we realized that it's two different objects, we actually we didn't really know how to explain it at first until uh, further analysis showed that it's actually possible to have an almost exactly the same orbit for two different moons or two different objects, even in a, um, if it was a planet and another planet. So we could technically have other objects orbiting with our planet Earth, for example, and and as a matter of fact, we actually do have uh, several asteroids orbiting in a very similar orbit to our planet Earth. And they do create this kind of a um, horseshoe orbit with our planet. But other than these asteroids, we actually haven't found any other objects in our solar system that have this unusual pattern. Anyway, number two is something that we actually have only seen very recently. So as a matter of fact, we've discovered that Saturn has another very, very large ring, but it's very difficult to see it and it doesn't actually show in the game, but it is out there and it's possible to see it in infrared. And this particular ring is actually formed and created by this moon right here called Iapetus or actually two moons, uh, Iapetus and Phoebe, they, uh, as they orbit around one another, they create this kind of a ring at a distance of about 128 times the radius of Saturn. So it's basically this far away and it's right around here. And actually here's a way to show it to you in Universe Sandbox 2. So basically this ring right here is formed by Phoebe and Iapetus and this is probably the largest and the farthest rain we've seen so far in our solar system and actually was quite an unusual discovery when we just found it. Okay, in fact number three are these two other moons called Pan and Atlas and I'm going to try to find them. They're actually not very large so I may have to just search for them here. And unfortunately in the game they don't really look exactly like they should look but this is what the real shape is. They are basically saucer shaped. And we didn't really know why they were saucer shaped until we realized that what we see here is a formation of rings around moons of a ring planet. Basically, both Pan and Atlas developed these rings over time and these rings were formed from the rings of Saturn. They basically deposited on the 
on the lateral side of these two uh, relatively small moons of Saturn. And as the dust was kind of deposited around the uh, moon, it created this kind of a saucer shape that is very, very unusual and very unique in our solar system. But basically it was formed because all of this dust collected on the sides of these moons. So this is Pan and here is Atlas. Now this doesn't really look exactly like it should once again, but it is a more saucer shaped um, object as you see on the screen right now. And this was actually very recently explained by the scientists from University of Paris. They've simulated uh, the creation of these saucer shapes. And it was actually a very unusual discovery and they've published a paper about it, explaining that basically this saucer shape is possible if you have a moon that's orbiting within or very close to the rings of a ringed planet. And anyway, let's go to number four. And number four is a moon called Hyperion. And once again, this moon is not exactly well represented in this game, but the surface of the moon kind of does look like that. As a matter of fact, all of these dark spots that you see are actually very, very dark caverns that go through the entire moon. And this moon is actually very large. Its diameter is 320 kilometers um, and it has a large crater here, here somewhere as well. That's about 120 kilometers large. But what's interesting about Hyperion is that it's essentially... 46% empty space. It's very, very porous. It's uh, essentially Swiss cheese-like object where you have almost nothing on the inside and there's a lot of these really long, really large caverns that go through the entire moon. And so you could actually fly through this moon in some sort of a spaceship and come out on the other side very easily because uh, some of these craters are very, very large and some of these caves are probably the biggest caves we have in our solar system. And this particular object actually has been discovered over 150 years ago, uh, specifically in 1848, and it was the first non-round moon to be discovered ever. And in terms of composition, it really just has a bunch of rock in it, but, but for the most part, it's actually all ice. It's all water ice. So if you were to melt this, it would basically leave you with a tiny rock that would possibly not even have any caves left in it because most of these caves are formed by uh, frozen ice. And object number five is Enceladus. Enceladus is actually deserves its own video, but I'm going to talk about this sometime later. And the reason why Enceladus is so cool is, well, first of all, because of its brightness. It is the most reflective object in our solar system. It reflects a ridiculous amount of light. Over 90% of light, actually almost 100% of light is completely reflected from the surface. So looking at this object may actually hurt your eyes, in real life at least, because it is very, very, very bright. But this is also the reason why it is also very, very, very cold. The temperature here is ridiculously cold, so it's basically a very large ice chunk. And what's really cool about this object is that we actually have discovered that it has something called cryovolcanism. Uh, basically, it has volcanoes just like our planet Earth, but instead of uh, plumes of lava, it has plumes of water and water ice spewing from, from within the, um, the planet where we think there is actually a liquid ocean underneath it. So this is a multi-layer um, moon. You have really thick ice on top. You have liquid ocean underneath all of this. And then somewhere in the middle, there's probably a rocky uh, center as well. And what's really, really interesting about this ice and the sky volcanism is that this particular moon creates another ring of Saturn known as the E-ring. So the E-ring of Saturn is formed entirely from the volcanoes uh, or cryovolcanism of Enceladus. Basically, all of this um, ice and water that spewed out from, from within the moon is deposited around the Saturn and it creates the E-ring around it. But not all of it uh, goes into the ring. Some of it falls back onto the surface of the moon and it returns back as snow, ice, and then possibly becomes liquid water if it goes underneath as well. And this is actually one of the few objects in our solar system that is also geologically active meaning that it actually has things um, exploding, things moving around, and possibly even some sort of... Um, play tectonic like activity on the surface but most of it is caused by um, the interaction with Saturn and specifically the tidal forces from the strong gravitational field of Saturn. So because this object orbits around Saturn, as it orbits around Saturn uh, the gravitational forces of Saturn cause a lot of the internal 
motion of Enceladus and basically even warm up the insides and possibly even cause the liquid ocean underneath the surface here. So uh, this is a very cool world to visit one day because we even think that if there is actually life in our solar system, this is a very good candidate for it. And anyway, let's escape Enceladus and go back to Saturn because I think I'm going to stop this video here. I wanted to kind of talk to you about um, these unusual facts that you may have not known before and specifically mention these different moons that you may have not heard about, about before as well and give you an idea of how unusual, how awesome and how really, really, really cool Saturn actually is. In one of the future videos, we're going to discuss these moons in more detail and possibly uh, discuss Saturn as well because there's a lot more mysteries I haven't covered in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with your friends or someone else who you think may like watching space videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye.